10 seconds. Meeting is now streaming. Hey, everybody. I'm Tammy Creenage. Welcome to a, another episode of our CMA A Day Challenge. I am your host, Tammy Creenage, and I am super excited to be showing you guys, um, be sharing my screen with you guys, and to introduce you to Jimmy Burgess, who is the person who has been, um, who kind of started this process back in 2018. So I'm going to introduce everybody to you, and then we'll kind of get started. We'll talk about, um, he's going to tell us how he got started, why he got started, and the results he has now. So Jimmy, please tell us about yourself. Tell us how you started doing this, and uh, we'll go from there. Well, Tammy, thank you. It's, I mean, I, it's pretty interesting, the little thing that I started that you guys found this. So I'm, I'm really um, humbled to be on here and um, really excited to share this because, very frankly, I, I think it's the most impactful thing you can do for your real estate business right now. Um, and so where it started for me was, is, you know, I've been, I've been in real estate now 27 years um, and um, had some success selling, rode the ups and the downs of the markets, um, ended up in 2018 um, it was my last quarter, full quarter in the sales side of this before I moved into the position I'm in now, which is chief growth officer. And I get the privilege of um, leading about 250 agents that um, closed about $2 billion in the last 12 months. And so I've got a great group of agents that I get a lot of ideas from right now. But where this started was I was looking at the typically the fourth quarter for us in my coastal market. And in most markets, it's one of the slower times. And so one of the things that I wanted to do was is to make sure that I was reaching back out to those folks that I had talked to during that year that were either past buyers that had mentioned they might want to sell. They were past um, folks I'd met at open houses, whoever it was that owned properties. And I made this list and I kind of put it in an order. And I just decided I was going to do one of these video unsolicited CMAs a day. And um, and because I'd never seen anybody doing this. And I knew that when I did these, whether it was in listing presentations or when I had done these for people that just asked about values, that typically I got the business. And so um, I just started doing this where it was just like I was like, listen, this is the you know, it, it was we're heading into the holidays the season of giving, um, whether it be Thanksgiving or Christmas time. And I was just basically at a place where I was like, look, what can I do for the clients that would be impactful? And that's what I did. Um, and then so as doing that, you know, um, almost immediately I started getting calls. I wasn't even asking them for that. I think I shared that last week. And um, out of that, you know, ended up listing over $11 million directly from those 72 that I did one each day that I worked during that fourth quarter of 2018. So um, it, it's just to me, it's, it's a no brainer. Um, we're all in the business of adding value and deepening relationships. And I don't know of a single way you can do this where it's more personalized with the video and also giving them something that's personalized for them, especially right now with the way values have moved in the last 12 months and everything we've been through a touch point right now where you're giving them something that no one else has given them, um, can really be impactful. That is awesome. We did get to hear a little bit about that last week. So now what I really want to know though is, Take us back to your mindset. So you're in the business 25 years. It's 2018. It's the summer, but you're like 25 years. You're a big shot, right? Can't you just coast the fourth quarter? Like, you know, Tammy, this is the biggest thing for me. And it's always been that way for me is, is I've, I've always understood that what got me here is probably not what's going to get me there. And so what I had to do is just try to figure something out that was going to differentiate me from everybody else that was in the market. I mean, you got to understand, I mean, that year previous, I mean, we'd sold, I think, $50 million with my team at that time, you know, the year previous. This was something that I was introducing, basically, and typically what I did is before I'd roll it out to my team, I was doing it myself. So this was something that I was really just kind of testing. Um, to see what it would look like and doing it with my personal things. And then by the end of the quarter, I mean, it was like, I was like, guys, we got something here. And so um, that's kind of what the mindset was, is that I knew that um, I needed to just continue to develop and grow those relationships and uh, understanding that, listen, yeah, we, we'd had some successes, but in reality, especially as fast as the market is moving now, if you're not continuing to grow, you're dying. If you're not continuing to add new things to your business, your business is not, not necessarily just going to flatten. It's going to go backwards because the velocity of the things that other agents are doing and that the way that the market is changing is changing at such a pace that if you're not changing at that pace and growing with that, um, along with staying with some of your fundamentals, things that you do to prepare yourself, 
you're going to get surpassed very quickly. So that was the mindset was, is that I just knew that if I was, if we were going to do something that some results that we had not had to that point, um, then we were going to have to do some different things. So Todd, do you have anything you want to add or questions you have? Oh my gosh, I could talk all day to Jimmy. I just, love, <laughs> I, I just love, I just love what you're, what you're doing. And I, you know, I love the fact that you tracked it, right? I mean, most people say, oh, I'm going to do this, but then they don't actually um, take to, you know, follow the, the path to get there. They don't take the time to actually track it. So I love the fact that you said, Hey, I work 72 days. You sent out one a day. You said they took about 30 minutes each. Is that, is that accurate? Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and it seemed to me like, you know, you must've gotten faster. Was that always kind of the average time or is that, is that kind of a normal thing? So that was the average time because you have to understand some of these were like in certain neighborhoods where it would be the same floor plan. So I could knock five of them out in an hour, you know, literally it was just changing the names and giving those people that with the same data that I had pulled up, I just recorded the same video and told the same thing to a different, instead of to Sally, this was to Joe, you know what I mean? And it was basically, hey, this is like your floor plan. So some of those were that long. And then there were some that were obviously, you know, with, with ours, some of the ones I was doing were pretty high in volume, you know, as far as, you know, value, they took a little more time. So some of those would take up to an hour. Um, and especially when I first started, but as we got, you know, streamlined, I would take like a certain farm neighborhood that I would have seven or eight in there. And I would do all of those for the week in a batch. So I do them in a couple hours. So I wasn't just like every single day. I tried to be you know, specific on the days, but literally I would batch them out as quick as I could with five or six at a time. Um, and then just release them out one at a day. I tried to stay a week ahead personally, you know what I mean? So that I didn't have a day where I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I just, I don't have one. And I just tried to stay consistent with it and one every day. Yeah. Consistency is so important. And what about, um, you said that you were tracking with bomb bomb who opened the video. So were you automatically calling everyone after they opened it? Or were you, if, if they didn't call in a certain amount of time, you were also falling back up on the phone. I only followed up with the ones that watched it more than three times. Um, and the reason I did the three times was because that gave me the ability to know that either they had watched it multiple times. Odds are that they had shared it with a spouse possibly, um, or there was some distinct interest in that. Um, and that's just what I did. I mean, listen, that, that is, it's not like that. You know, there's magic pill to that. Um, I think whether it be going back and seeing who watches them, whether it be keeping account of how many you did and what the responses were. I've always said in my business, what we inspect, we can expect it to grow. And so I always wanted to inspect what the results were. And I think everybody ought to do that that's doing this. Go back and see how many times is a certain one watched? How many times, if you have that ability with Bomb Bomb or whatever it is, just make sure that you're tracking that stuff because if you're tracking it, I promise you're, 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 you're going to see better results. Yeah, amen to that. Amen to that. All right, my last question, then I'll let Tammy, Tammy take over. So you had said 8% was your, was your listing rate out of that. I think that's the key because people get discouraged, right? They do it. And they're like, oh, I called 10 people. I didn't get one. And, you know, I just I love the fact that you also know, not just from your results, but you implied that from coaching others through it, that about 8% is an expected listing rate. Yeah. And I think, you know, as you know, the biggest thing on that is, is don't do eight. Just, oh, well, gosh, I didn't get one. It doesn't work for me. The numbers work if you work the numbers. So what I would say is, is commit to this. I love the fact that we're talking about, you know, basically 60 days here. If, you're, if you do 60 of these, I will you know, I can't promise everybody, but I cannot fathom if you do 60 of these, you don't get at least two listings. I, I just cannot even fathom that that doesn't happen. Um, it, because every single person that I've ever had that did 25 of these got at least one. And in, in some cases got as many as five, six listings. Um, because the first ones you go to are the most effective. I mean, we know I mean, we've all probably, I mean, if you're in the business and you're actively working with sellers or you're farming in the neighborhood or you're talking to sellers consistently, you know the people that are probably going to sell in the next year. You've got a few. You may only have one. You may only have five. Whatever it is for your business and where you are in your growth, depending on the number of those people that are hot, when you give them this, it is gas on the fire as far as your ability to get the opportunity to list their house. That. That could just gets me so excited because I know from the mortgage lending side, um, Todd also coaches um, mortgage loan officers and he's kind of created, he and Dave Savage have created the TCA a day, which is the total cost analysis. So similar to listings, we love refis. Mm -hmm. Refis are, they keep us well, warm and well fed during slower months. So mm -hmm. I know I've been applying 
doing unsolicited because I could do these all day. I've got purchase clients that I could write a total cost analysis for all day, but I've me I've challenged myself to do them unsolicited. So, um, and the results, I did seven last week and I submitted two loans from that. And I know that's just from this effort. So, um, hey, I Tammy, love let me, how, can I mention something, Tammy? Yeah, also, please. because listen, some people, I've had people that were either newer agents or that maybe said, well, listen, I don't know that many sellers. Odds are there's somebody in your office that has left the business, that has orphaned clients. Mm. Odds are there are six to 12 month old um, expired listings out there that have not relisted. Those are ideal people. If you don't have people yourself, there's a great way to be able to do that is, is to go find orphan clients. And listen, even if they weren't in your office, you could take someone that you know got, got out of the business in the last year or whatever it is from any office, pull up in the MLS, all the sold things that they've sold where they've had the buyers in the last however long, depending on how many transactions they did, reach out to those folks and just basically start adding value to them. Those are orphaned clients that are looking for someone to take them by the hand and start to guide them because they're not receiving that from anybody else. Um, so no recipe cards then or newsletters, just these videos. You know, I, um, listen, I'm a big, I'm a big postcard, phone, email person. That's kind of my, my motto on a lot of this. So um, however you're staying in front of people is better. Ultimately, though, it's going to have to come down to conversations. That's why I like when Thomas had mentioned about who did you call? The people that I called were those ones that were raising their hand. By doing this consistently, you, you they, they kind of almost, it's like playing poker with the cards up. I mean, you're seeing who's truly interested. So you're literally having the opportunity to know before you call that, you know, just, and they don't know you've seen that they've opened it seven times. So that conversation is pretty easy. It's just like, hey, it's Jimmy. I just want to make sure you got the email the other day where I was just kind of giving an update idea on the value. Um, just want to make sure you received it and see if you had any questions. And they'll be like, man, I, yeah, I got it. It's really good. You know, I did have a question about this. That's the way those general conversations went. And then I just say, well, listen, I got some time free tomorrow. If you wanted me to, literally, I could walk through the house in five minutes and I can give you, an, I know I gave you a range, but that's because I hadn't been in the house in a while. Um, I can give you an idea in five minutes of walking through there exactly what it should sell for right now. And a lot of them were like, yeah, hey, can you come by tomorrow? You know, that's, that's how I generated the majority of those listings. That's, that's just so incredible. So my next question is, um, I get a lot of new agents watching. And the biggest mm -hmm. question that the newer agents were asking, and you kind of touched on a little bit, is how do, I, how do I do this if I've only been in the business for a year? So you mentioned mm -hmm. orphan clients. And then the other question the newer agents had were, um, if I'm farming a neighborhood, how do I get their email addresses? Mm -hmm. Or should I do it old school and do a print version? Yeah, um, I, I, me, I'm, I mean, I'm going to apply what I've been doing because a lot of people have done this in the mail, but they get those, they get mailers all the time. Sometimes the mail's not open um, by putting that description in that email address. Open rates were through the roof on this thing for me. I mean, um, so I would go that route if at all possible. Plus, it's a way that they can get to know you and they can look at it when it's good for them. Most people, when they're opening their mail, they're standing over the garbage can. They may take a quick look at it and they throw it away. This doesn't go away especially when you reinforce that with that way to get the email addresses. There's a couple different ways. I mean, if you're looking at primary residence places, um, Cole Realty Resource does provide some of those. Um, also, what we've used is Truth Finder. Um, it gives it gives basically a background check on folks and gives pretty accurate. That's about as accurate as we've seen. Um, I will say this and I'm going to give you kind of a thing that we did a little different, too. Um, I would start with people, if you're in a neighborhood or you live in a place that has an HOA, um, as an owner, request the HOA to see if they have a con contact info for people in your own neighborhood. Um, if you're not wondering where to start, start with your own neighbors. Start with the people that already know you, that they see you, they like you, they trust you. Um, you know, we did this where, um, you know, I'm going to get sidetracked here a little bit if that's okay, but this will feed into this. Um, one of the things that we did is, is trying to, obviously, like we're talking about trying to be different all the time is instead of just doing typical farming, I started doing digital farming where I was doing basically what we're doing here with a video on the neighborhood. And I started with what happened initially on this was I got an email from a client of mine in this little condo place down by the beach, older client, older, older complex managed by somebody that had managed this place for 20 years. They sent an email out and said, and my, my listing 
the owner sent forwarded me the email from the HOA that said, hey, we'll be paving the parking lots at these buildings. Try not to go in the front door these days. So she sent it to me and said, hey, forwarding you this email from the HOA, it looks like we need to go in the back door if we need to show it on these days. I look up and they did not blind copy. They put the owner's name, they put the unit number and they put the um, email address. And I said, ooh, y'all should have given that to me. Because um, listen, I'm not going to spam anybody. Let me just be real. I'm not going to spam anybody. But what I started doing was is I started digitally farming those neighborhoods where I was taking that group and once a month I was sending it. And I would put just like what I did with the valuation update for their address. I would put the name of their condo valuation update for June or July or whatever month it was. And I was getting 75 to 80 percent open rates cold on these emails because of it being so specific to these owners. Um, and that was a way that I got some of those. Well, then they got me, okay, well, how do I get more email addresses? So then I went back to some of my favorite buyer clients or some of my best clients that were in neighborhoods and said, hey, love to add some value to everybody in your neighborhood. I'm not going to spam anyone. Um, I'm just going to add value because listen, I didn't ask them if they wanted to list it. I didn't do anything. I just told them what was going on in the neighborhood in a video and then had it just basically just like if I'm writing for him and I have it bullet pointed because people scan. I just want to give them the details, active, pending, sold, you know, current status, one paragraph. And when you do that, I ask those, those past clients, hey, do you happen to have an HOA list? I'd love to just add some value like I do to you guys for the rest of the neighborhood. Sure, don't tell anybody where you got it. They gave it to me. And I was doing those emails to those neighborhoods. And again, the first couple months when I would do these, literally, and let me say this, because of the way I did this, and I can share this with you, Tammy, if you want me to, but... I got zero complaints because all I was doing was giving them information. There was nothing in there asking them for anything. Um, it was like, hey, if you're curious about your value, this has really changed the market. Just let me know. I'll be glad to give you a free no obligation update on your valuation. First month, nothing. Second month, one call. Third month, two emails back. And then it became a freaking ATM. Every single month I would send this out and it costs you zero dollars because you've got all these email addresses. Well, then those that would call back or those that would email me back and say, hey, yeah, if you don't mind, just give me an update. We're probably not going to sell for a year. Those people then went into the queue to receive the unsolicited CMAs. So that was how it started building was that way. So I really went a long ways around to give you an idea of how to get email addresses. Listen, they're almost public knowledge now. I'll say this. I took one cold neighborhood just to test this and went to Fiverr.com and said, I'd like to get email addresses for these folks and just had the, you know, the property records for those folks, their name and their address. And it, and it came back and it was about 60% correct. Well, you got to understand the neighborhood that I asked them to do that for the 60%, there were 500 homeowners that basically in that neighborhood. So I ended up with 300 homeowners in a neighborhood that I was farming. And so that I could supplement with the things I was doing mail out wise, I had the email addresses for these folks. So if you have a list of people you're looking for email addresses, you can use something like fiber.com. This is not going to be perfect. But it doesn't have to be perfect, you know. So, but that's there's a number of ways to get those email addresses. Well, that was a long answer to how do you get email well, addresses? You know what? I, I feel like Dave Savage here, like Todd. Seriously, mic drop. That's how I feel. <laughs> that is amazing because I I know there's probably going to be some people on this call. There's 150 people in this group now, so I know there's going to be some people who have issue take up issue with that. If you don't want to do it, don't do, don't do it. it. Yeah, he's just giving you an idea, which I think is genius. And if I could get 300 refi opportunities, I'll take them. So let, let me say this. If the typical person spammed someone, I would disagree as well. You, you can't imagine. I wrote an article about this at Inman and did and, and shared the video on exactly what I did. Um, I got hammered by some people on this. And I was like, listen, I mean, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. All I can tell you is that after sending out thousands of emails like this, which are basically unsolicited video updates on their neighborhood, I ended up never having one single person complaining. I used MailChimp. They could just opt out if they didn't want it, you know, um, which didn't cost me anything. And so, but I, but I will say this, here's the magic juice on a lot of these unsolicited things as well. I live in a coastal area. Storms come through. A lot of people were out of the area or out of town owners. When that storm came through, I went into some of those neighborhoods. Literally, my son, who was at that time 12 years old, with his shaky hands on my iPhone, videoed me basically saying, hey, I know you're probably wondering what's going on 
with the storm. We dodged the bullet. Our friends to the west or to the east didn't dodge the bullet as well. But I just wanted to give you an update on what exactly it looks like here. And I just said, I'm going to pan around so you can see this. If any of you'd like for me to go by and just do a quick walk around your house, just email me back, text me back. Be glad to do that. I'm right around the corner. Um, hope you're doing well. Just want to give you some peace that everything's good here. When we did that, the open rates on that, not only were the open rates, we had response rates in the 40% range of thank you so much for watching the news. So I think you've got to come from a place of not what do you I get, but what do I give? And when you come from that place of just giving, and I promise it boomerangs back way more than you can ever imagine, giving it where it comes back at you. You can't even handle how much of it comes back when you come at it where you're just giving and giving and giving. Coming from a place of contribution. I love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um todd do you have some, what what do you have to add to that that was so great well i think you you nailed it jimmy i mean the bottom line is if you're adding value they're not going to unsubscribe and if it if they thought it was crap then they would unsubscribe and and so i would encourage everyone to think about you know try it try it in your own neighborhood where you live get the hoa list and see what can you know what can happen as a result i, I think the bottom line is this right is that you want to you know you're the real estate expert right if you truly believe you're the expert um, then you should be doing this. You should be adding value to your clients. And yes, they can go online and they can find half a dozen websites when they type in their address that give them what, what that website thinks is the value. But you think that is inaccurate. Well, guess what? Your, your clients, the people in your sphere don't actually think that's inaccurate. They think it's, it's actually pretty accurate. And the way for you to help them understand it is by giving them the true value that you can offer and then doing what Jimmy did, that little last hook. Hey, by the way, I give you a range for a reason and then go on in there. So I, I think it's genius, Jimmy. I think more people should jump on it. And like Tammy said, if you have a problem with it, then don't do it. I feel like if you're going to send them, you know, uh, a chicken soup recipe, yeah, that's probably not something that they need. They might want it, but they probably don't. Um, and so I think, I think that that's uh, an easy action plan, especially for those of you who are struggling with who do I reach out to? Because that's the number one thing is people say, I don't know who to reach out to. And then number two is they're too busy to do it. And, you know, I think you also nail it too, Jimmy, by talking about how you batched it and made sure that you had time to get them done and were a week ahead of yourself. Yeah. I'll tell you what, let, let me add one thing to that. Talk. Here's the thing also is, is I've always focused on, listen, there, first off, I'm not for everybody. My accent and energy is going to turn some people off. That's fine. You know what I mean? That's fine. I, I call them OKP. I'm looking for our kind of people. I'm looking for my kind of people. And the way I'm going to find my people is by adding as much value out there. And the videos actually add it as a filter. So the square pegs won't fit in my round hole. So by the time I'm saving me and them some time and effort by giving them the information in a way that hopefully it makes the most sense to them. I will promise you this. If you send these videos out, you're going to find your people. You're going to find your people in a way that not only is it they feel like they know you. So all of a sudden you're sitting here and you come into the listing appointment and it is, I mean, literally it's amazing what these listing appointments were like. I mean, it was almost to the point where they're like trying to sell you on selling their house, um, which is totally flipped and different, you know? So I just would say the consistency, like Todd's mentioned, and getting this stuff out there to people um, and just literally when you start filling everybody else's cups up, so to speak, and pouring into them, I promise you the overflow is going to be amazing of what it'll do in your business. So a um, couple questions that we've had in the chat and then throughout the guys who are in my panel, if you have questions on, just put them in the chat and then we can read them. And then if we have time at the end, I'll let you guys come on and meet Jimmy and get to ask him questions um, for the sake of timing and technology. Newbie here, um, we're gonna <laughs> kind of not do too many changes here. So, um, but each week I get better. I get a little better, right, Todd? Um, so. Snail mail, a lot of agents were asking about, can you do like, not, I don't want to say old school, but can you do like an old school listing and mail it? Does that, do, have you tested that theory? Yes, because we've got some that don't want to do this. And listen, if you're just, uh, you know, if you want to do it that way, let me give you a little hint of what I would do though. I would do the video also. So let's say you don't have an email address, do the video also and go on and get, oh, now I'm drawing a total blank. This is getting old stuff sucks. What, what's the little QR code? Get you a QR code to put on the mailer that would they hover their phone over it. It takes them to that video, whether it's on BombBomb, bomb, whether it's on YouTube or wherever. If I you'll do that, that so that it connects that with something there and make sure you do big arrows pointing at the QR code and say to see a detailed evaluation of this analysis in video format. 
you know, hover over this. And it, people are used to it now because they're doing it with menus everywhere. So now the QR code is made direct mail. Give us the ability to personalize direct mail to a certain extent also. Um, so if you're going to do that, um, you know, obviously I'm a advocate for the video in the first to so lead with that. But if you can't do it, but do the QR code, because that's going to give you the difference. The people that are super interested, you know, do something that says, hey, and by the way, hover over and watch this video where I go into more details, you know, and then make it real personal right out of the gate. You know, where it's like, hey, Tammy, thanks for hovering over the QR code and taking a look at this. I want to go through and give you some specifics that I couldn't do when I was doing it that way, when I was giving you just a, a letter format. You know, so make that very personal if you're going to do it. That's a great answer. Um, now, my question is more for our senior agents, like some of those who've been around for a long time. And some of them, I find that some agents feel like they don't need to do this. Um, they, they, they've got enough business. They don't need any more business. What do you say? What, how do you speak to your senior agents when you're coaching them on this stuff? Yeah, I t first off, I tell them everybody's different. You know, um, and so whatever they want their business to look like, um, that's completely up to them. If they want their business to continue to grow, they're probably going to need to try some new things also, or they're going to have to really evaluate. What we, we typically do is we go in with me. I personally go in with our experienced agents. We'll look at the last 12 months of their transactions and we'll break down where did those come from. And so then what we do is, is what are you spending your time on? We'll look at the five things they're spending their most time on. And then what we'll do is, is we'll say, oh, well, gosh. 70% came from this thing you do 10% of the time and you're doing 30% of your time. And I only see one sale all of last year from that. Why are we keeping doing this? So I would just say, I don't know if this is the, this is the answer, you know, unsolicited video CMAs. I know it's a great arrow to have in your quiver, especially as an experienced agent, but I will say this, whatever it is you're doing in your business that's working, there are odds are, if you will evaluate it, there are things you're doing that are not working, that you can eliminate and either have more time with your family or whatever is important to you. Or you can take and go all in on the thing that's, that you're spending 20% of your time on is getting your 80% of the results. And I'll promise if you'll just do now double the time you're doing that or the effort you're doing on that, your business is going to go up. So it's one of those where I think it's just a going back. I think, Todd, I talk, we were talking about this earlier about, you know, it's again, what you inspect, you can expect it to grow. So be, be the, nobody's going to know your business better than you unless you don't look at your business. So take a look at your business, figure out what it is. And if you're looking at something that's ineffective, plug in these video CMAs because I know that I know that it will make a difference and add value to your business. So now along with that, so now when you took us back to 2018, you did a test trial for this for yourself to kind of see how this would go. Have you, do, is this like become like a Berkshire? Because I'm telling you, the mortgage community, the mortgage community is eating this up. Yeah. But the real estate community, um, do, is this like a mainstay now for your Berkshire Hathaway people? Like how, how has this transformed you as a person, your career? And then what's happened to your team since, since then? Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, those that lean in on this are getting more business. Um, I think I mentioned it last week in the video. We've tested this with offices, with Berkshire offices out in California. We've done this with Berkshire offices pretty much everywhere. Chicago, we've done it in um, uh, one. We've done it with a number of offices and obviously in our office here in Northwest Florida. Um, and what we're finding is, is about 8% results on these. So, you know, if you're doing these, you're, you're getting a return on average of about 8%. You know, so if you do you do 100 of these in the next 60 days, you should expect on average somewhere in the neighborhood of about um, eight listings from that. 50, you're going to get four. You know, I mean, again, those are averages. Some people right. in here are probably going to do better than that. Some people may not do that well, but it just depends. But and everyone you do, it gets better. But yeah, so what it's done for us is, is it just gives us a way to differentiate ourselves, um, to show and give value in a way that's unique. Um, that people can appreciate that they can come back to at a later date. You know, we haven't even talked about that today. I mean, the biggest thing right now is, you know, that was a one-time shot there. Let me tell you who's really getting results on these things is are the agents that have now been since I did that, that I work with that have been doing them every six months for these folks. I mean, and wow. then they're giving updates. And so now you do one now and let's say what's today, August, whatever it is, what's today, August, the, uh, August, the ninth. So, I mean, yeah. let's say you go out six months from now and you're looking at February, I think that's right, February yeah. 9th, and you put on your calendar that I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to do for Todd, um, I'm going to do one for him again six months from now. 
Now, the beauty of that is, is you can come back to the one you had before and reference it in your next one you do and say, hey, six months ago, I sent you this. It was here. Here's where we are now. Um, you know, obviously, uh, the market is continuing to change. If you have any questions, let me know. Th that compounding effect of that is dramatically higher than what we're seeing with the initial just 8% out of the gate. And I'm just curious, um, what's the return for internet leads? Those who want to spend like $10,000 a month, $5,000 a month on internet leads. I'm just curious what the return, what the ROI is on that. Yeah, everybody's different and it depends on the leads they're getting. I mean, some, obviously somebody's further down the funnel and they're more expensive. Um, it's like everything else. I mean, they have a return if you work on them. You know, what I found is, is on internet leads, the quality of the lead is pretty much directly proportional in most cases to the quality of the follow-up um, and yeah. the value added to those folks. Um, but what I would say is, is if you're looking for something that literally costs you nothing but time and brings back results, I don't know of anything better than the video unsolicited CMAs. I, I think you got to be doing a lot of things. You know, I mean, most people we want to try and have four or five different lead generation, um, lead conversion type legs on the table, so to speak, of what we're doing to generate leads. Um, and then I've got certain people that, man, they do great online. They're really good with that. You know, they're very responsive. They just do really well on the phone. Um, and then I've got some that they just, it's just not their thing, you know? Yeah. So I think every individual needs to figure out what it is for them um, because you could go spend $5,000 a month and get a return of 6,000. And I could go do it and get 8,000. And Todd could go do it and get 30,000. So mm -hmm. it just depends on what is in your lane. And what works best for you? So I think, you know, especially if you're a newer agent, you need to be trying those things. As an experienced agent, we are always trying to constantly have two to three new things with our agents that are really want to grow. Two to, new, two to three new lead generation, whether that be a new farm, whether that be a new online lead source, whether that be a new follow-up system, whatever it is, we're trying to test those all the time. And then we're refining those after nine months. We're taking whatever worked and we're putting it over here as an implemented system. We're scraping the others and then started with three more. So we're constantly growing the systems of the businesses as, as time goes by testing those. I, I love that you've got, you're able to kind of integrate this into all these different um, avenues, the old, all these sources of business for you guys. Cause I know door knocking is popular. Farming is popular. Mail farming is popular. I love this idea with QR code. I know the next question everyone's going to start asking me is how do I do, do QR codes and Guys, I'll figure that out before. Let me let me say this. We live in a great era, Tammy. <laughs> Think about this. And let me tell you how you can find that out. Google. Yes, Google will just thinking. simply say, how do I create a QR code? And within five minutes, you will have one created and they will show YouTube, you exactly YouTube. I'm sure YouTube Amazing. has probably yeah. got lots of different ways to um, do that as well. So, um, yeah. So let me mention what. Oh. Timmy, can I mention one other thing? Yes, now you cued me on this, okay? And I'm sorry, I'm, I feel like I'm interrupting you, but um, no, but I get yeah. excited about this because listen, this we're talking about this with sellers. You brought up online leads. You you know that odds are that online lead is registered with three or four other agents. You want to know how to stand out with them? The place, you know, we use Boomtown, so it just depends. We can kind of see what they're looking at. So if we see they favor their mm. property, for instance, um, it, it gives you an idea of what they're looking at, or they request information on the property. Go in and pull up your screen. And instead of doing a valuation analysis for a seller, pull up your screen, have it just like I did with the Google um, Earth, pull in on that house, then back it out and show here's where the school is. Here's where the amenity is. This is where that is. Here's the here's where this house sits in the associate in the in the community versus where the pool is located or the amenity is located. When you do that, I promise you, you're going to stand out from the four or five other places they've registered that have just called and said, do you want to see the house? So if you do this, where you begin to add value to them through the video we're talking about for sellers on the buyer side, it's 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 you were talking about standing out and being different. Right. Nobody else is taking the time to do this. So if you're at a place where you're trying to figure out that lead that came on that you know is hot because you can see they're on the side or they're doing these things, everything is buying signals, but they won't return your calls, send them a video email, you know, email. Just say, hey, I've been missing you on phone. I saw where you had asked a question about this property. Let me show you how I evaluate properties for you. Go in and evaluate and say, hey, here's the location. Here's what's sold in the neighborhood. Here's where the amenities are. This is where the school is. This is where the hospital is. All the things that we do demographic wise, do those things for a buyer. And I promise you, your, your online conversion is going to go through the roof also. That, that is really powerful stuff. I have a couple of agents on here 
Uh, one real estate team does Boomtown, and I can't wait to share that with them. In fact, I hope they're on this call. Um, what I was thinking when you were talking to is pre-listings. So mm -hmm. if you have a listing appointment, yeah. how amazing would it be to put one of these video presentations together, send it to them, and when they're interviewing their two or three other people, you know, you're going to stand out and you haven't even walked in the door yet. Yeah. And what we're doing with some of the agents now is, is we've got it basically already put together. And then we do a personalized video to them and say, hey, looking forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. I um, wanted to give you a little bit of an idea of kind of how we operate. So to, below, you're going to see some links to some you know, videos of the, your house, of houses like that we do for marketing purposes. You're going to see our checklist. We do that basically through that. And we explain it basically on the video we send out to them. So absolutely, the pre-listing package, connecting with them before you get there is the best situation possible. And nothing does that better than video. Guys in the chat box, if you have any questions, chat your questions to me. I'm happy to share them. I do want to share two really good success stories for you that just uh, it's not, this is not even my brainchild and they brought tears to my eyes. So uh, one, he's a newer agent, couple years in the business. Um, and he literally took notes, followed everything you said, figured out how to do Google Earth. He said he did a video for his mom. It took him like an hour to do the first video. And I, I I'm, I'm trying to see he's not in the chat. I don't know. Gio, if you're on this call, you need to tell us how you did with your week. He made all of his CMAs. And um, he said the first one took him an hour, followed exactly what you said. It was funny watching his video was like watching yours the next day. Um, so he did his seven videos. He said the first one took him an hour. The second one took him like 45 minutes. And now they take him like a half an hour. And I bet he's even gotten it down faster than that. Great. Um, another one of my agents who's been uh, not newer, but um, not, he's been around for a little bit. He said that he was like, yeah, I'm not doing video. Just, he was just not going to do it. And then he was like, well, all right, let me try this out. So he looked up a couple of his past clients and saw that some of their houses had appreciated like a hundred thousand dollars. So he's like, it was easy. I just sent it out. He said, it's actually fun. And, yeah. um, you know, he was able to get a refi client out of it for me. So thank you for that. Um, and you know, it, he said, I love it because it's helping me reconnect with my clients in a way where I don't feel like I have to talk to them. They see my face. And he said, what I realized is they already know what I look like. So I might as well make a video. That's so right. those were two really good success stories that I was able to gather from that. So um, how about Todd? What have you heard in the uh, Win by Noon site? Any success stories that you want to share that, um, that have kind of taken this how, how the mortgage arena may have taken this by storm? You know, it's been kind of interesting. You know, I definitely think the loan officer crowd is a little more vocal, like in bragging about their results. I did five TCAs. I did nine TCAs. Realtors look quieter. They're not like bragging about, about what they did. So I, I love hearing what Geo did. I mean, I think to me, the biggest challenge is getting people to want to be on video. I was at a, a lunch today with, uh, you know, about a dozen real estate agents. And this woman was from the South and she said, I just don't like my axe. And I spilled some ice. I think that's actually the ice in the at a event I was at, and the guy didn't understand when I said ice. I had to say finally say the stuff in a glass that makes it cold. And I thought, well, that's the whole point, Jimmy. You said it. Like it's who I am. Like it's your OKP thing. It's how you figure out who are your people. And mm -hmm. I think that that's you know the challenge I found was the other thing was that people don't want to be on on video. And I don't know why real estate agents seem a little more timid by you know intimidated by that. What do you think, Jimmy? Yeah, I mean, I think I think that everybody just I mean, we're also self-conscious. I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, gosh, I mean, I watch some of mine and listen to some of the stuff and I'm like, oh, my gosh. You know, I mean, I think I don't I don't know you ever get over that completely, but I just think I think action gets results. And so when you do that the first time and you get that positive response and you realize, like Tammy was saying, that you know, it, it's actually fun. The people appreciate it. You know, I mean, you're doing them a disservice by not getting this information right now. We've done a little shift right now because what we've seen is, is we, we actually saw a flattening of the number of transactions last last in June. And then we saw an, a decrease pretty dramatically in the number of transactions in July versus July last year, which is the first time we've seen this in 14 months. So we're watching the August numbers. But this past week, the CMAs we were doing, we were giving them that information just saying, hey, just want to give you an update. We're coming to the end of our typical season time. We're watching numbers month over month to see, you know, if you're thinking about selling the next couple of years, you want to, as best you can, 
sell into strength. Um, the strength that we've had appears to, at least we're watching it for the last few months, beginning to level off. Um, so if you're thinking about selling the next couple of months, it might be a good time to at least get an idea of where you might be. And so we've been doing some of that where we're kind of giving them a little additional information on what's going on in the market. And that's made a big difference now. So tell me a little more. That's generating. Hey, tell me a little more about what you're watching there, you know, and then we can go into, OK, well, there were 103 total houses in the 30A market, which we service um, as far as single family houses for sale in March. Um, at the end of March, we have 200, um, 200. I've got it written down here because I just had these numbers in front of me, 293 now. So it's not hard to see. The market is shifting a little bit here. Some of it's seasonal, but we're going to continue to watch it. But if you're thinking about selling in the next year, you still got an opportunity really to sell into some strength. Um, and, you know, we'll see what happens as we go forward. That's, that's I do think that's really critical, right? I mean, it's I always say anyone who says if you're a client, if, if you're building clients for life, then you have to add value for the life of the client. And there's no doubt that people are worried is this a bubble and all of that? And, you know, every market's going to be different, but that's just a great opportunity for you to answer the question that, you know, a hundred percent of your clients have. So this is something that we're starting to really utilize phrase wise, um, because we're really getting to that point where it makes a lot of sense is okay. Your house has gone up. For instance, one that we did today, your house has gone up in the last two years. This is a coastal one, 57%. Um, do you feel that over the next going forward now, given this information, that over the next two years, your house has a better chance to go up another 20% or potentially pull back 5%. You know, because if you feel like you're betting with the potential of another 20%, what are you, you know, you're risking some of this. So it just depends on where you are. Listen, we don't have a crystal ball. We don't know what the market's going to do. We do know that markets go up and down. And we do know that um, we don't believe prices are going down right now, but we do know that the transaction numbers are clearly going down, um, which is an early indicator. In every single market throughout history, you've seen where the prices continue to go up for about a year and a half after the transactions begin to level off. In our market, we've just seen two months worth of leveling off of transactions. I'm not saying that's a trend yet, but it's something we're obviously keeping an eye on. Um, just to see. So hopefully that gives a little better idea. No, for sure. For sure. I see Tammy's muting her dog out. So luckily my dogs are downstairs, so you can't hear them, but uh, yeah. it's, it's all good. That's the, that's the beauty of uh, the one benefit of the pandemic has been that now it's acceptable on Zoom to have your dog bark at your child scream. It better be. It better I have be. a little 13 pound Shih Tzu and my husband just came home and I forgot to text my husband and say, be quiet when you come in. So it's fine. <laughs> whatever. No. So, yeah. all right. So I am so grateful Jimmy, for joining us. And Todd, I, you know, last week you were running crazy and you made time. So both of you making time for this is really great. And um, we don't have any more questions coming in the chat. And I just checked on Facebook and I didn't see any questions. I'm sure people will probably, after they've had a chance to review and listen, they'll probably come in with more questions. Um, so, Jimmy, the big thing I want to know, and I think everyone else wanted, and I know you touched on it in your video, is um, how has this, how has this business, you know, this little thing that you did, not little, but this, this project you took on in 2018, how has it changed your business and how has it affected the lives of those around you? Because you're still benefiting from it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's it's it has a it has a tail that just uh, other marketing doesn't have. So, yeah, there's been no doubt. I mean, obviously, it's continued even when I shifted in this position. You know, sell over five million dollars um, directly from it last year without soliciting anything from something I did a year and a half ago. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it's made a huge difference financially for me, the business. Um, it's pretty interesting to watch it kind of be utilized. Um, in other places, as especially as much as it is being done. Um, you know, it was it was something when I did the video for Inman and kind of went through this, you know, it was their number one trending article for like three weeks or something crazy. So it's been interesting to watch something that, you know, I remember sitting there when everybody else left the office and doing doing these in the evenings, you know, at six o'clock when nobody else is in the office and wondering if I was crazy. So yeah, it's, it's fun to see this and to see how it's impacting other people's business. The funnest thing for me, I mean, I guess I'm just getting older and I'm getting to a place where it's, some, it's more about legacy for me, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and so from that standpoint, you know, the texts and the emails that I get from people that are like, Hey, I can't thank you enough. I just got the biggest listing I've ever had from doing that video on Solicit CMA. And that's the juice that I'm talking about. You know what I mean? That's the stuff that I can't get enough of. Um, and so from that standpoint, I just feel like as a real estate community, 
I've always believed this, and I think we're seeing it now more than ever, um, that we're all better together. And so by sharing ideas and sharing those successes and doing what, what, what you're doing here by bringing everybody together where everybody can benefit from hearing the stories of other people, I just think it's just critical for us to, um, you know, I mean, I think this pandemic is obviously, it's crazy how um, the physical separation has brought us closer together, if that makes any sense. Absolutely. I feel like, I feel like it has absolutely brought us closer together as, um, as people, as realtors, as a community. Um, and so that, if there's one thing that I'm super excited about and feel blessed to have gone through what we've been through so far, it's that with all the suffering out there, you know, um, it is absolutely giving us and uh, giving me a better understanding of um, how quickly you can make an impact through video, through online, through um, just giving to other people um, and how much it comes back. I think that is so great because it's absolutely true. Uh, two years ago, I never would have even, I've always kind of done video. I've done Facebook lives. I was that kind of person, but I never would have thought to reach out and set up a Zoom meeting. And I've been following Todd for probably, uh, I've been in the business for 20 years. So probably since Win by Noon started, I've been following Mortgage Coach since Dave Savage started this a long time ago. And so these people have just, and now you, and you guys were just always like, I was trying to find a song. I think there's a song that talks about this. You guys were just people on TV, people I watched, people I learned from. And to now be, to have, to be able to pull you in and introduce you to this world that I have, like this group started with, uh, you know, 10 or 15 people and like half of them I had to drag in here. And now it's grown to 150 people. I don't even know who these agents are. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, so I love that I get to be part of this as, and as a lender, it's always been my niche to grow, you know, to help real estate agents grow their business. Because if I can do a good job as a lender, then they can do a better, a great job as a real estate agent. I want them to go out, get more business, and then I'll take care of our people. So that's kind of always been my mantra. And this platform has really made that possible. So I'll bet you Todd will agree with this. Because I think, you know, I've been doing this 27 years. I've never been more excited about the real estate business than I am today. And, and, I'll, and I'll tell you why. A couple of things. First off, um, we've never had the ability to have access to training like, like we do right now. We mentioned YouTube. We mentioned Google. You know, I mean, I mean, I, I, the, the thing that's fun right now is, is I get to give people what I wish I would have had. You know, I mean, we've got over I've got over 200 videos with tips and strategies and interviews with agents on my YouTube channel. I'd have killed for something like that back in the day. You know, <laughs> I mean, we got almost 100 podcast episodes on real estate sales podcast. I would have killed for that stuff. And it's not just me. Every single person out there can find what you need. There, there are no excuses anymore. You know, if you're looking, you know, I mean, if you're a new agent and you're like, how do I generate business as a new agent? Go in Google and YouTube. I mean, you know, I know, I know I've got two or three videos on things, action steps to do. There's so many people out there that have the information. And then it's just taking that information, refining it in a way that gives you the ability to be you, the you you were created to be in the best way possible and just take action. Just add, just go out there and help people. You know, when you get done with having any agenda, when I'm when I made calls, when I first started in the business and it was the old days of ABC, always be closing. It just it, it was painful to make calls right now, especially with where values are to literally pick up the phone and call someone and say, hey, I'm, I'm just checking in with some of the neighbors. Not sure if you're aware of this. The house two doors down from yours just went was came on the market, went under a contract with multiple offers. I unfortunately had one of the people that missed out on that house. And they're probably at a place where they'd be willing to pay a premium for a house like yours. If you heard of any of your neighbors that might be might consider selling because that price really changed the value of your place and everybody else's neighborhood. Do you know how many people are going to be like, stop calling me? You're telling me my house is worth more. That just doesn't happen right now. I will say this. Those calls in 2009 and 10, those were painful. You know, hey, just checking to see if you thought about selling. I'm underwater $200,000. No, I can't sell. You know, that's yeah. a different call right now. Man, we're in the happy zone. I mean, everybody's got equity. I mean, for the most part, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so yeah. making those phone calls and helping people out has never been easier. And um, when you shift and don't have an agenda and you just want to find people you can help, um, man, it makes everything so much easier. I think that's just awesome. Todd, do you have any um, comments before we wrap this up? 
No, I mean, I totally agree with you, Jimmy. I mean, this is a great time because, you know, in the end, you just said it, you're not harassing people. You're not calling them and giving them bad news. You're giving them, you're giving them good news. And I, I think it just comes back to the whole idea of being a trusted advisor and being the person that they can count on, you know, for the, for the information. And you know what, if the market does change, if the market does go a different direction, if their life goes a different direction, it's going to be a whole lot easier to connect with them then if you've connected with them now. And so I just think it's a great, it's a great time. It's a great opportunity. And the whole point of a challenge like this is a little bit of accountability, right? Be part of the group, you know, be letting this group know, you know, what you're doing. Let this group know if you're having struggles, right? I saw Karen make a note that she wants to get faster at doing these. Well, that's exactly it, right? We already, we've already heard the stories. The first ones take more time. Jimmy said, some took a lot of time, some took a little time. He batched them together. And so I would just, you know, take this tiger by the tail and, you know, get out there and, and take action and be committed to it. It's one thing to sit here and watch the video. Kudos to you who watched it, you know, 55 minutes in. Um, it's a bigger thing to actually um, step forward and do another CMA uh, later today or tomorrow and, and get moving and then stay committed every day. I think that's a great wrap. Um, Jimmy, I'm so grateful. Thank you so much for joining us. Todd, thank you so much for joining us. Um, guys, uh, you can find Jimmy's YouTube. He's got a slew of YouTube. Where do you find your YouTube channel? What is it called? Um, I think it's just Jimmy Burgess. Um, Jimmy Burgess. I think if you just, just Google pull up, him, that's yeah, what I did. Yeah, it's, it's simple. It's just Jimmy Burgess. Yeah, if you pull it up on there, I think I think that's what it's under. I don't really know. That's a you great question. And that's just another that, point Jimmy. I want to make about that. It just it's very simple. Like, don't get all fancy with all these fancy names. Just be very simple. It's you're very easy to find that way. Because I'm telling yeah. you, I've been looking at Dustin, Florida. I'm going to get way off topic now. I've been looking at Dustin, Florida for years and years and years. That part of Florida you are. And now I told my husband, I'm like, um, we need to go there. I might have to like try to work out something where I could do a presentation at Berkshire Hathaway just so I can come and uh, have a reason to come. So. Yes, come this way. Yeah. All right, you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, Facebook group, we are going to do this every single week. Our last day will be November 1st. So guys, you are more than welcome to join every week as my panel. Um, we're gonna have some other speakers on as the weeks go on. I'm working on gaining more speakers. If you are someone that has something you can contribute, please feel free to reach out to me. I love what you, I'd love to just hear what other ideas are. So Jimmy, thank you so much. Todd, you're the best. And guys, that's a wrap, bye.